welcome everybody um, to this fantastic discussion that we've got this evening of the colour purple at home. I feel extremely privileged to be in the, with the company that I'm in tonight. I was lucky enough to see the Colour Purple um, in New York, and I'm um, extremely proud that the Colour Purple found its way to Leicester, where I'm based. Um, tonight, what we're gonna do with the Curve at Home, um, which is a production in association with Birmingham Hippodrome, we're gonna have a panel discussion. Um, you can have an opportunity to submit your questions. Um, we'll do our best to answer those, but before we do that, what I'm going to ask uh, each panel member to do is to introduce themselves. So I'll, I'll say their name and um, I am going to be really tight on time. And then you all have a maximum of two minutes each to introduce yourself and say who you are, what you've done and what you're doing, what your role is in this current production. And I'm going to start with Marsha, please. Hello there. I'm Marsha Norman. I wrote the book of the musical. <laughs> Not the novel, but the book that the musical follows. Those are the things that happen between the songs. And I was the, um, I, I was, it was one of the, it's the best collaboration of my life with Stephen and Brenda and Allie. And we had so much fun. We had so much fun. And if you want to know more about that, you can ask. Thank you. Um, can I go to um, Stephen next, please? Hi, I'm Stephen Bray, and um, I'm going to, I should start by saying that uh, Marcia just mentioned Allie Willis, who is not with us, sadly, um, and um, it was through her good graces that I became associated with the, the project and um, was invited to write, uh, you know, share the, the music composition and, and lyric work with, with Brenda and uh, Ali and Marsha, and it, as Marsha just said, it was the time of my life and I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. Nikolai. Remember to unmute. Hi everyone, Nikolai, Artistic Director at Curve. Absolutely thrilled to be with you all this evening and to be joined by these amazing writers and artists. So um, here's to a great evening. Thanks, Paulette. Tanuki. Hi, I'm Tunica. I am the director of um, stage stage production of the Color Purple. Um, yeah, so I did I did the directing. Thank you, Alex. Hi, my name is Alex, and I was the musical director for our production at Curve of the Color Purple. And just to say, it was, uh, it, you'll find out more about it, I'm sure, but it was one of the happiest, most joyous greatest group of people to work with and one of the greatest experiences of my life certainly so far um and so i'm so happy that we've made a record of it and that you can all see what we got up to so oh, yeah. i forgot to say that that's also completely true for me i just got suddenly very nervous and thought i would take up <laughs> i want to just i want to just echo alex's sentiments it's one of the creative joys of my whole life so. fabulous to sean Hello, um, I'm Tishan Williams, and I play I played Seely in our Leicester um, Curbs Color Purple. Also, one of the greatest experiences of my life. Also, really thrilled to be in the room. Also, really nervous. And here's to a great Q and A. Seely, I mean Seely, Carly. Hi, I'm Carly. I played Shug in the wonderful Color Purple. And I am so excited to see you all on the screen. It's literally crazy. And I just. <laughs> <laughs> Musta. So sweet. Hi, I'm Mutsa. I am beyond honored and excited to be on this panel because um, I'm a PhD researcher at De Montfort University. Um, and my PhD project is centred around um, what the archive could look like if it centred the living creative knowledge production of black people. Um, and the working title is Textures of Blackness in the Midlands. Fantastic. And Brenda, please. Oh, hi. I'm Brenda Russell and um... It's a pleasure to be with all of you guys today. Uh, I'm a co-author of the music and score, or the music and lyrics, I guess. <laughs> and um, I'm thrilled to be here to meet you all. And uh, y'all look great. 
And um, I started with Stephen and Allie. First of all, it's, it's very difficult for me to talk about Allie, but you all know she passed away last Christmas Eve. And it's like a very heartbreaking. I almost didn't do this because I miss her. And uh, I'm gonna be good though. And um, Stephen and Allie and I were working on a project of Allie's online, a, a comical, uh, animated feature thing on online and we met we didn't we met years before but we were working together anyway and Allie got a call from Scott Sanders asking if, if she wanted to uh, audition as a writer for the show and she said well you should have all of us because we're really good and <laughs> so so eventually that's what happened I have a better story, but I, I don't know if you want me to tell that yet. <laughs> well, do you, can we continue with you then, Brenda? And do, do you want to tell your better story? And also just tell us a little bit more about the, the, the use of the different musical styles in the songwriting that you did for this. So should we, should we continue with you? Okay, if you like. Um, my, my little story was uh, we spent a little while producing three tunes. I think we did three, right, Stephen? For, to audition and um, we're record makers. So we, we made basically a record. We had, we had horns, we had <laughs> people singing. We had more than a piano, which is usually the case for a theater audition. And um, we sent it to Scott, what we did. And Scott, we didn't, we didn't hear from him. We FedExed it, we knew when he would get it. And we're like, uh oh, <laughs> maybe we didn't get the job. He forgot to call us because he was so excited. He's running around playing it for people, singing, and he's having a ball. And we're freaking out because we're thinking, we have not heard from this man yet, and this is not good. Finally, he called us and said, oh, I forgot to call you. We're like, <laughs> he called us eventually. And he said, I don't usually say this, but I would hire you right now. He said, but I, I, I don't usually say that right up at, at the beginning of something you know, you're in. But he was very happy with the music we sent him. Fantastic. I think it's in the audience and I would like to know, um, and I think this one's for you, uh, Marsha. When did you first become aware of the novel, The Color Purple? And could you tell us about how you, you took that novel and it, you made it into a musical? Do you want to unmute? Yes, Drat. Um, so <laughs> Alice, Alice and I won our Pulitzers on the same day. Um, she for The Color Purple, the novel, and me for um, my play, Night Mother. And um, the, there was a, the bottom right-hand corner of the New York Times that day, front page said, Norman comma Walker win Pulitzers for drama comma novel and and that that was the beginning of our I mean I had already loved the book and then I thought oh this is kismet this is um this is I'm supposed to be involved with this woman in this book and and, and it was, was heaven I mean don't even need to tell you how heaven it was it was heaven so so then um, um, a, a couple of years went by and I got a phone call. I kept raising my hand going like, hi, if anybody's doing anything with this, I, I wanna be involved if I can, uh, please. And so I got a call from Spielberg who said, please come out and talk to, to us about doing the, the movie of The Color wow. and, I, and I went out I and um, what? I didn't know he called you. Oh, oh yes, he, he did. This is about the movie. Spielberg did about the movie. And I went out there and I and I had a chat with him and we we didn't see eye to eye on on the on the movie. I knew that I couldn't write the movie that he wanted because it left out Nettie and you know it had anyway. So so I was I thought, well, all right, that's 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 done. And then Quincy Jones, who was in the room as Alice's representative, took me out to lunch. So it was like, okay, this is good. I don't get the job, but I get to lunch with Quincy Jones. And so <laughs> we drove over to this French restaurant and his big Bronco and, and 
I mean, we were driven over by, in the Bronco and um, we had a great lunch and we talked about Patrul Clark and Michael Jackson and, and you know, we had, I had my chance to say what a fan I was of his and all that. And then, it, you know, and that was that. And I came home and uh, did, I knew I didn't get it and I didn't and I saw the movie and I, then I started raising my hand again saying, well, if anybody's going to do a musical, um, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like this in the back of the room going like, please. And if I had already written, I'd already um, won uh, Tony for the Secret Garden by then. And so I was like a sort of certified uh, book writer for musicals then. And I had um, had the good sense to change my career from playwright to musical book writer. <laughs> and um, I, um, I'll talk about that later if anybody's curious, but it's just about, it's hard to be the only writer in the room. And when you're in a, in a musical, you're not the only writer in the room and that's really good. Um, but so then um, but I did not get hired and another person was hired and I thought, well, okay, I, okay. I'm, I understand, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And so then um, there was a Saturday that came in my life when there was, the, I got a phone call that said, the Color Purple Workshop is gonna start on Monday and um, we don't have a book writer. <laughs> well, did you lose her or what happened? I mean, did you, I mean, I didn't really know any, I hadn't been keeping up and, and I, and I, then I understood that the mechanics of book writing, which is a big deal, was just something she didn't know. She's a wonderful person and a great writer, but but you know, a, a book for a musical is like a ski lift. It's got to take you all the way to the end, and it's got to deliver you to the songs, and it's got to come back down from the songs to catch and tell the story. While it's like the string in a string of pearls. So that's what you have to do if you're the book writer. And I came in and God bless Stephen and Brenda and Allie. They were, they, they were so happy to meet me, which is, I did not know what to expect. And the cast was happy to meet me too. Although if you want, I'll tell you a Sophia story later that it was really tickled me, but um, I got to work instantly. I sat down, I, I was supposed to be in Paris on that Monday, but no, I went over to the rehearsal hall and I literally wrote the book as the cast was learning the music and I wrote it in the room so that all the things that came to me from the actors in the room and from Brent, I was able to take it all in who they were. So it was literally from my standpoint, written on them um, as the fashion people would say. So that's, that's and, and then we, and then, and then we went to Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and um, first we survived a summer in Atlanta, but I won't, I, I don't need to tell that. That's how my, that's how I got involved. I was, I was turned down and turned down and turned down and then I was called and, and I showed up. Oh, no, we're glad. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love, I just love, love these two, these two. So we'll just keep feasting on that all of the time. <laughs> So Stephen then, can you just talk to us um, about the music then and, and your role and the connections with the music, so the book, the music, can you, can you talk about that? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just putting my notes down because every time Marcia talks I have to take notes and because she's, the, the wisdom is in, insane and I appreciate that Marcia, I'm so happy to, to hear your voice. Uh, um, the string of pearls is something I'm going to keep forever, I love that. Um, uh, you know, we 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 have an interesting. I, some people ask us. Some people have asked me how Brenda and Ali and I work together in the music world, and and I always described it as a Vulcan mind melt because I'm a Star Trek nut, and um, because we all are composers and we are all are lyricists. So we don't. It was definitely not the traditional. Somebody does lyrics. Somebody does music, and somebody does. Uh, you know. Um, you know, arrangements and such, because we, like Brenda said earlier, when we got the gig, we, we, um, we, um, you know, we were doing what we didn't know at the time, we were orchestrating the demos as we were going at, at first. And, but we sort of sit together in a room for what about, I don't know, it seemed like five years, Brenda, sitting, sitting together <laughs> in, in a room and, and just kind of Allie's room. conversation about what is the, um, 
you know, what is the gist of this song and where, what is the, uh, what's the, where are the emotional peaks and valleys and where does this thing, where, where can actors no longer speak what they're feeling and they have to now sing. So we kind of figured that out together. So we don't have those traditional separate roles that, you know, Ali would, Ali would, uh, you know, sort of just say, stop what you're doing. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's coming, it's coming. And she would just sort of let it flow. And, and Brenda's, uh, you know, piano and and musicality you know infuses the whole show and and sometimes i thought of myself as the I, the the sort of referee between the the alley's like a fountain of creativity brenda has this brenda and i are a little bit more alike in that we like to kind of meditate about things and sort of let them let them let them cook a little bit and so i found myself sort of like uh not mitigating but sort of maybe mediating a little bit uh those those two kinds of creative energies and and uh so that's the best i can do to describe the the process paulette it's a little it's a little non-standard so with the non-standard process then in terms of pulling the music together they'll just go to, to, uh, to shan and um carly tell us about how you then as performers what um what with that sean okay um yeah i th i think that's one of the things that's so beautiful and how the music marries with the script so beautifully one of my um one of the my favorite moments to tell was one of those um songs it was lily of the field dear god lily of the field um, it was such a big, big moment and gear changing Celie's journey for me. And and I just think the music in that moment, in that scene, just played out so well for me. And I was just able to express that beautifully, especially with where she was with her faith and questioning God and everything that he'd done in the, in this moment, in this time for her. And yeah, for me, there was just, I just think it just marries so beautifully and it was just so easy for those reasons. Thank you. Carly? I think the the music and the lyrics are written so perfectly that when it comes to getting into character and what the um, Shug is trying to convey to um, Celie, it's so easy in, in a sense, you don't even have to try because the way it's written, it just, it comes out so as such a narrative that even the moments where it's like, you hide your head like a little bird, just it just speaks to the person because that's who they are and who she sees. So I think sometimes Suge can be seen as quite a harsh character that she has this kind of like really hard exterior, but with the music, you're able to kind of sit back and show these other sides to her that people might think she doesn't have, but really she's got so many layers that she chooses to kind of allow Celie to come in. So I think being able to play that with the music and where it takes you emotionally, it's not just a song for no reason. It really does transcend you and lead you into the next moments that the audience is able to see a relationship forming or a softer edge to Suge, who is just this like balls to the wall person that's like, oh, I don't take any nonsense. So it's a beautiful thing to be able to play. And yeah, it just really helps as an actor. So um, Alex, um, can you talk to me a little bit more about um, your role then as musical director? So we're getting a sense of how the music came together, how the performers have reacted to that. You're the musical director. So my role, I or someone, uh, Gareth Valentine, brilliant musical director here, it's always said to me, you're like the guardian of the score. So you've got your writers and my job is to go, right, this is the score and try and uh, I teach it to the company, We I lead it. Um, in the performance and it's my job to kind of convey um, what the brilliant in this case world-class writers how they would like their songs to be realized in our production and then to work alongside Tinu and the cast and kind of realize our production and for me this was um, uh, just extraordinary because what made such a huge apart from such an incredible well constructed score. Um, we also had the most incredible musicians in our company. Sometimes you do shows where you might have people whose musical ability isn't um, 
quite as strong as their acting ability perhaps or or uh, whereas in this case I think what was really important when I first sort of came on board is uh, the complexity of the score and the way this really needed to sing and ring out musically had to be at the forefront of the performances as much as en of anything because it's the emotions of these characters not being able to necessarily speak how they feel but uh, present that mu and realize that musically that was going to be so important so in our audition process um we were quite um i was quite vigorous with making sure that uh people's cho musical chops were there um but the result of that was this incredible company that meant that every single music call um and rehearsal was as much a sort of lesson and masterclass for me in what everybody's kind of musical ability brought to the forefront. And what all of these songs enabled us to do was actually just see what all of the individual artists kind of brought to the table, I think, when we were rehearsing them. So if you take something like Mysterious Ways, which is the wonderful opening uh, number that's sort of set in church, our company, they've been there, they've been to church, they've sung, they've been part of choirs, they've been part of congregations. And I, and sort of when we were working on it, it was about, you know, there was dancing, there was clapping, there was people improvising as we went around the room. And it was just sort of getting all of those flavors into it that was so um, exciting for me to see kind of what everybody else could um, bring to the table. But one of the things that I think um, is amazing about this score, and I, I have, one question if I can ask very quickly to the writers is the construction of the songs is so unique and so unlike a lot of other musicals out there just kind of for people watching you so often get numbers in musicals that are kind of verse chorus verse chorus whereas if you take a number like I'm here it's a whole scene it's a soliloquy there's so many different musical modes in that um, and I'm just, and it's a, it's just a masterpiece, that number. I mean, the whole score is, but that number particularly for me. And I just wonder when you're um, constructing a moment like that, how, where do it, the gear shifts, where, where would that come from? How would that kind of, how does that happen? I mean, that's what I'm, you know. Uh, Brenda, you want to take that one? I hey, that. First of all, the beauty of, of working with Stephen and Allie is that we were all coming from different musical places, basically. We, we all had different histories and tastes, similar tastes, but varied tastes. And when we came together, we all brought our little pieces to the table. So, and, and Allie is so brilliant because she, she just has an automatic, okay, kids, this, this is what I hear, you know. She, she was just very fluid, very, beautiful. And, um, and Stephen and I, we collaborated all the time with ideas, musical and lyrical. He's very sparking guy. He sparks a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of the gospel, some of the um, the church ladies things were fantastic. He he started singing to me. He like, what was that thing, Stephen? Like, um, that the church ladies did that everybody loved? Your, your favorite he, is... He uh... All we got to say, I think, <laughs> which they did, which your oh, cast did amazingly oh, well. But oh, but can I say, oh. <laughs> right? Can I? Uh, but but Alex, in terms of structure, if I'm here, um, I agree with everything Brenda just said about you know where the musicality comes from. But I I think that that's a really great example of the collaboration with Marsha and with at the time the director Gary Griffin who who really needed to have the effect that you mentioned. You said that that thing, it's a, the song plays like a scene, you know, with the beginning and a middle and an end. And I think that that really was, well, for lack of a better phrase, beaten out of us by, by the very wise people at the, at the creative table, because we, that song went through a lot of iterations and I remember I'd send it home yes. to my wife and I'd say, Stephanie, you like this version? Because we must have had like 10 versions of that song. And, um, but we got, but we, you know, we just really needed to, to do what you said. It needed to bring her, you know, I don't think we knew the term 11 o'clock number at the time when we started the song, but we, by the time we finished it, we knew 
<laughs> well, 11, 11 o'clock number of all 11 o'clock numbers <laughs> so i mean that's quite a place to go you know amazing and, and but like i say we i don't think we knew that term going in brenda did you know what an 11 o'clock number was no i didn't i didn't either and um well, we didn't know anything about Right. So, so we had, so we had, well, you know, you, fantastic guidance. Marsha, did you want to say something? I will. Well, I, I just want to say that um, as a, that I, this was a moment in the, in the creation of the musical. It was the last song that came in that, to finish and our, um, our Lashans, and um, if you remember, she, <laughs> the song was finished when she finally said she wasn't going to sing another version of it. She wasn't going to learn another version. This was it. And she didn't care if, if, if who was happy and who wasn't happy. Well, we were all ecstatic, but, but, but the desire to, the, the need to let go of it and let her have that number is, is, was a pressure that, that built up until it was, until she just grabbed it and took it away, and Brenda was in was sick. Remember, and Allie was in a fitting for a, a opening night costume. Do you remember this? And and we got this word that like she was not going to sing another version of that song. She was going to sing this version, and and there you go. And it and it turned out to be, um, of course, remarkable and astonishing. What was remember, Marsha, when we were in a rehearsal. Um, we asked LaShawns, what do you want to say for I'm here? And she said, well, what would you say? You know, and she said, well, I, I, I would say, I want to flirt with somebody. And we went, <laughs> <laughs> she just, we, 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 for her voice, her voice was amazing. Yeah. And her spirit is amazing. And she just said, I want to flirt with somebody. Was, That's good. We like that. And, you know, she inspired us a lot to write for her. Great. And, and by and by the way, um, to Sean and to Nuke, you guys, we we have not seen the show the way you presented it because you know it's usually we're sitting in an orchestra pit, or uh, not pit, but in or in the orchestra section watching the proscenium. So this whole experience of seeing the curve production really kind of opens it up because we don't we've never seen close ups before, and so I really want to commend you know director. Uh, is it Tanuke? Am I saying it correct? It's, it's Tanuka. <laughs> Tanuka. Uh, beautiful work. And, and Tashawn, fantastic, you know, rendition of that song. So thank you for that. Thank you. And can we stick with you, Tanuka, and talk to you, uh, talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, we're here, we're going through Black Lives Matter, you know, um, the, the story is powerful within itself. How do you, do you think it resonates with 2021, what you've produced as a piece of work? Yeah, it's, I certainly hope so. I, I think one of the things that I really love about the story and about it, 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 it sorry, its iteration as a, as a musical, I think is that it, for me, it's always felt like it's doing two things simultaneously. It's on the one hand being incredibly universal and open-armed and open-hearted and for everyone. And on the other hand, doing this very, very specific thing of studying what it's like to live at a very particular intersection in, in this case, to be black, to be a woman, to be poor, to be queer, or we might use that language now, maybe not back in the day. Um, but it's sort of managing to do those two things at once, be for everyone and for this one person. And, and that felt um, so helpful to me and such a, a useful way in for my, my brain. Um, and I think we're maybe coming to, I hope, who knows, I hope we are coming to a point where it's more, it's more requisite for people to understand what it might be like to live at an intersection of those things or what it might be like to have to consider not one layer, but two, but three, but four, but however many. Um, and so I'm hoping that coming back to this show for people who maybe saw it in 2019, that it might have an extra layer on it for those people who might see it slightly differently now. I, I certainly hope so. For me, it certainly did. And, and I think in the company, we felt like, you know, we all we all know this feeling, and I, I know I know these feelings. I didn't necessarily need twenty twenty to know that the world's pretty racist, you know. But like at the same time, I think there's something about <clears throat> having had a collective a collective reckoning that meant that suddenly, even lines like I, I mean, for me, it, one of the lines that really sings out is there's there's more obvious one like Celia's "If God ever listened to a poor colored woman, the world would be a different place." Feels different now. I think hangs in the air slightly slightly more resonantly now. But also, I think little things like um. 
when Mister says near the end, he he's wondering about things and he wonders about why us why us black why us men and women. On the one hand, it's a quite a quite a feeble, quite childish question almost. It feels almost sort of pathetic to suddenly ask that at that point in your life. And on the other hand, it's a huge question. Like why 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 is this a situation? It's you know, and no one can answer it actually, even though it's it's silly and little. Um, and so for me, it, it felt like it suddenly cracked it suddenly cracked open in new places, and it felt important to shine a slightly brighter light. Um, on those places, so I, I hope it rings true. But I also, I also think that it, it rang true when we did it in 2019. I suspect it rang true when you guys opened it on Broadway. It it it, it does that thing to you anyway because it has the it has the the facility is there, the material is there. But I I hope we were able to access that in a new in a new way this time round anyway. So Muster, I'm going to ask you. Okay they were able to access that, given your your topic of your research is about textures of blackness. Could you, do you, do you want to talk to us a little bit about how how your, your response to The Colour Purple? Yes, definitely. I've, um, so I've read the book a million times. I have my copy there. I'll actually just bring it up because um, it is so old. Um, and sunburnt and just like earmarked in so many different places um, and seeing its multiple iterations and also, I mean, where do I start? Alice Walker as well um, as a storyteller and how she talks about um, art and creative processes and the creative potential and how um, art is often denigrated into this space where it's just entertainment. Um, but Alice Walker shows us how art can be theory, um, how it can be, how poetry can be theory, how we can really be contributing new knowledges into the world. Um, and I feel like this particular production and um, how it was transformed from it's been transformed in so, from so many different locations and to now see it at the Curve production, sitting at home, watching it on my TV um, and having new things like eye contact, um, which, you know, you rarely see in a film, they rarely break the fourth wall. You, you rarely see it in, you know, live theatre productions too, because you're part of a, um, a collective audience and to feel like, um, this is the first time that I felt like I wasn't just bearing witness to this story. Um, I was really feeling it deep. When Celie was looking into my eyes, I was, I felt it. I felt like, yes, this is one black woman talking to another black woman about the struggles that we know so deeply. Um, and this addition of music and sonics as well is so important for me. This, um, uh, I, I called it the ancestral black sound when I heard it and how it harkens back to a sound that's based um, on a feeling um, and that understanding being very visceral um, and just the embodiment and creative life force embodied and themes of deep longing that, you know, the church music, even the music, um, uh, when Nettie was in Africa in that section, you know, um, I think they were saying we we walk on or we walk home and having that repeated by Seely um, kind of created diaspora relations that was so beautiful for me um, and also talked about the resistance and the power in moving and also the power in standing still and, and staying put. Um, it was just all oh, so amazing, so amazing. I, when it finished, I was like, can, can we not go again? I'm, 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 no, I'm okay. done, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, so Nikolai, do you want to tell us about, you know, because um, must just told us about the end product of sitting at home and being at home and the reaction and how she felt, but realistically it's gone on a journey. It was a stage production, you know, then it was recorded for live streaming. Can you talk to us about, that process. Yeah, thanks, Paula. I think it's as somebody um, mentioned earlier, one of the great things about, you know, coming out of this pandemic and finding new ways to sort of connect with our audiences and, you know, keep these um, shows sort of uh, alive, as it were, is, is the camera. And there's something so 
thrilling about being able to see Tashan and Carly and those incredible actors up close. And I think, um, again, one of the panelists touched on it earlier, that the Broadway musical and, and this great um, art form, the American musical, is able to do things in a way that um, really no other art form can do. It can tell these great big stories with huge politics and societal issues sort of sitting at the heart of it with real sort of um, guts and humanity. And it can also be entertaining and the musical is often um, dismissed, often in this country, strangely, as being a sort of, um, uh, secondary art form you know it's not as it's not like a play well you know this you know you see the color purple up close like this nobody can be in any doubt that you're dealing with one of the greatest world art forms which is the musical but also seeing these actors and um really seeing into their souls in this way is is a very um it, it's a very um humbling experience i think and i think all of us who've seen the stream of the concert and had the privilege of seeing the production, you know, a, a few years ago, you can't help but sort of being blown away by it, but especially now getting it sort of close up, it, it's really, um, it's very powerful. And I think for all of us, it will remain with us, you know, and it's touched us personally in, in ways that we could never sort of imagined really. So. Yeah, it's um, it's an extraordinary thing, an extraordinary gift we've all had to be able to sort of work on it and and see the magic happen um, in in totally new sort of ways. So yeah, very very special. And and to um, to Sean and to Carly, could you just say again, sticking on that same theme of, you know, it was a stage production and now we've done it to online and the audiences and what's been the difference for, differences for you guys um, of, of having to perform it in that, in, in that way or it being performed in that way because the audience is in a different space? Um, it was just completely different. I mean, everything was stripped back. Our set was stripped bare. We worked with very minimalistic um, scene props and things like that. And, and everything felt a lot clearer in a sense. And we really looked at the detail of, of scenes because we just had, we just had ourselves. We didn't have any other business. So we were just able to focus on just our character relationships, what was going on in our scene, what was going on in our circle. Um, so that felt really different. And it, definitely like having the cameras, that was just a major difference for me. And me and um, Tinu talked about this quite a lot about how we was going to um, involve this audience in this new medium. And we talked about the prospect of when do we look at the camera and when do we make an audience feel like they're a part of this? Are we gonna make them feel like we are addressing them as God or do we make them feel like they're netty while I'm reading the letters or um, do we make them feel like the audiences are confident are they our friend um, so we really explored those kind of ways and how we would involve the audience and make them feel like they're a part of it from the comfort of their own homes so that was really nice to play around with in the space. Very cool. Carly? I think for me, because I joined the company a lot later, I wasn't in the original production, I think it really helped to focus the characters' wants and needs and what they wanted to get from the person that they were talking to. And there was no sort of fuss with any excessive props or set. It was just very sort of direct in the emotion they were feeling and how they were addressing someone else. So I think it really helped to kind of make it a more concentrated, less diluted performance, which was really great. But also, I think there's something so beautiful about when I watched it, you felt like you were part of this community, a part of the congregation. So it was like being in the experience as opposed to sometimes in the theatre, if you're sitting further back, you can feel sort of removed from it. Whereas this, I felt like I was literally one of those church ladies and I was like a fly on the wall, enjoying their gossip and the conversations. But also, I think sometimes people like to look away from a challenging situation or they might see something but they can turn away. Whereas this, when Tashan's looking down the lens, 
and she's singing these like heart-wrenching moments you could really you didn't have the opportunity to look away unless you were going to pop to the kitchen or something but it was that thing where you really have to look at what's going on and see this person and their struggle and everything they're going through which I think is the genius of film and having it on a screen that you have to look and the director can say this is where we want you to look this is what we want you to see this is the moment that we want you to kind of feel the impact of these these moments but I think as well the cheeky moments where you can kind of like have a side look to the camera to be like oh I, I see that you see this is happening it was a really fun thing to play but also you're able to have so much truth in these moments because you can really see so deeply into the character's eyes you can see their body language or just like a small motion so I think it's a really beautiful thing to be able to have put it online and people to have that more concentrated um, angle, I suppose. Yeah, and going on from that, I think a lot of the feedback that I've heard from people that have watched it the second time, that have seen it on stage in 2019, have said like whether they bought tickets and had to sit in the cheap seats at the back, they felt like they got that first-hand experience and seeing it in detail um, just by having the cameras and as Carly said, see single any of our faces and everything like that fabulous i'm going to open it up for questions now from the audience um so the the first one that i'm going to throw into everybody is what have you enjoyed most about working on this production who would like to answer that No, it was fabulous, but nobody wants to answer that. So no one, you just know it was fabulous, right? And so you all had a brilliant time and no one wants to answer that. Okay. Um, oh, no, go on, go on, we'll do it. Be brave, Carly. Go on. I adore the show. I listened to this album when I was back in college in like 2005. And oh my word, to be actually in the room. I think sometimes you can get self-involved, you want to do a good job and you're thinking, do I know my lines? What do I think about my character? So then to walk into this company that is just a huge family and then the first time they opened their mouths, I was like, I did not expect this because I already loved the music <laughs> and the people. So then when I walked in, I was like, oh my gosh. It's just every time so emotional. And I think especially in these times when we haven't had as much theatre and art and being able to express ourselves, it was a moment of just like, so cathartic just to be like ah your whole soul just opened up so I think for that it was just like it just felt like such a gift to be doing the piece be with this amazing community be mm. at Curve it was just unreal unreal so that's that's me <laughs> I you. think I think for me it, it's it's sort of about it's a few th a few things are really exciting about being able to come back to the color purple but I think um and, you know, I can sort of talk about what it's like as, as a director and as a sort of artist trying to make the work. But I think one of the things I love most about this show is how often I just got to be a fan. It's really embarrassing to say, but in some ways there was something really lovely about being like, what have we got now? It's a musical. Ooh, what are they can do? Miss Silly's fans, sick. And just like being able to sort of like um, kind of delight in, in everybody. And I think we're really lucky with the company that we have. Not only are they sort of super, super talented and have incredible kind of musical facility, but I think... Um, I think part of the work that Alex and I did when we were putting this company together was making sure we had people who felt that felt like a sort of um, a community and felt cohesive, but also had real individual flair, even if you had no lines, even if you want, like, it would be, a, you'd be able to really pick people out. And one of the really exciting things, the thing that I think is most exciting for me about doing this version where we're using the screen as our medium is that you're able to really hone in on everyone. You get, you get to know everybody. You get to know even people who have no lines or people who are at the back, you suddenly get, access to the individual so they, they they cease to be a sort of chorus block of the and like you know in the way that you often do and, you, and rather you get you get you get that when you want it but also you get humans you get individuals and it I just really liked being able to sort of like geek out on going oh look there's Deshaun oh look there's Annalisa oh, look, like, I, found, I found that really enjoyable so for me it was being able to sort of showcase all the, everybody all the kind of little jigsaw pieces that sometimes you miss. Okay, um, another question is, um, what is your favourite songs of the show and why? Who'd want to take that? Because you're all going to have a different song. So should we ask, um, uh, I'm going to ask um, Brenda, Stephen and Marsha. Well, I would say the most fun song to write for me was The Color Purple because it was a, a, an, an incredible experience because Allie would always say, well, we're not gonna go call a purple. You know? <laughs> we're like, no, we're not doing that. And, and um, 
it just came about, it, it was it's spiritual, that's all I can say. It was a spiritual feeling in the room that, you know, I was playing a few chords and Allie has the book and she's reading some of Alice Walker's dialogue or, or lines from the book. And it, it just sort of snapped in and, and you can feel it in the room. That's all I can tell you. When you're writing something and you feel it's special, you, there's an energy in the room. And then I, I'm the big hug. I'm the person that says, let's have a group hug right now because I knew it was magical. We all knew it was magical. So we had a big group hug, three of us. And, um, and we wrote The Color Purple. It was very moving, very spiritual kind of feeling. Stephen? Well, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit like asking which of your children do you love the most? Mm. <laughs> so I, I really can't, I don't think I could pick one, but I do, it's short, but I, Too Beautiful for Words is quite, you know, um, I, I'm very proud of that. It took a little while to get those lyrics together. I remember sitting in the back of Allie's steps for hours and hours going, well, I don't know. Birds? Can we get the, can we get the birds in? Um, but I, I would say if I had to say which one, um, I'm very proud of What About Love because it is, um, you know, it was our way of saying we're going to honor the relationship between Celia and Shug that the book, that the novel really sort of established in a way that the film sort of shied away from. And I'm very proud of that. And it was really interesting watching that sort of develop a relationship with audiences over time because at first people would sort of you know were aghast that these two women were singing a love song to each other because it, you know I think we might have might have uh made some history with that on in terms of what you know the, the Broadway stage and um and it would it would be it was really interesting to watch people decide whether they could applaud that song or not because there was so much you know there was still so much homophobia in the audience that people would sort of, they were, they felt, they, there was a hes hesitancy that in 2005 that we just don't have now. So I'm really, you know, not only am I proud of that song and, and being part of that, I'm really part, proud of being part of that growth. Marsha? Yeah. Um, I, I, first, I first want to say that um, uh, Alice Walker, I want to just praise Alice Walker again more all the time uh, for the um, for this book, but the, I I also want to say that she gave me one note one note when she realized I was going to write it and I was going to stay and I was going to do it and and I was just determined to you know do the best I possibly could. She said to me after I went babble babble babble. Then she said she, she said to me, Harpo is the new man. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, as and I and I would just want to thank her in case she should see this for that that sentence because it was very much a piece of guidance that I um, I used over and over and over again. Uh, so thank you, Alice. N now I want to say that my favorite song is "The Good Lord Works in the." And uh, <laughs> because I grew up in Kentucky, I went to school in Georgia. I went, you know, I was part, my family was part of that religious tradition of, um, I mean, I knew I could practically point in the Bible where it says the good Lord works in mysterious ways. And I, I, um, but I, I was not from the loving family, loving religious family. I was from the like dead, religion is here to keep you in shape and keep you on the right path and no 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 and um and so the the fact that you could write a story that was so founded in a religious culture and at the same time have it be the warmth have it be the family have it be the place where everybody knew everybody and um and, and was singing in in a, in a how it's the hallelujah chorus basically of of this piece is that is that song I think, and I and I cherish it and always will. Thank you, thank you, composers. Okay. I just wanted to offer a little trivia uh, trivia note from Alice. It was magnificent. Um, she she told us that um, before she started writing the color purple, 
she was married and lived in a different state. She lived down south. And she said she had this vision or whatever that inspired her. She said she couldn't, the characters would not come to her unless she got a divorce and moved. So she got a divorce and moved to California up north. She actually did it. And then the characters all came through. They would not come through until she got rid of the stuff in her life. And she did that and she wrote by hand, guys. She wrote that story out by hand. She did not do this. So I thought that was remarkable. Very inspiring. Okay, I, I think um, I think this might be the final question that which I'll, I'll throw open to everyone. Um, someone has said, having watched the streamed show, I was touched to see all the cast in tears during the final number. I'd love to know what was going through their minds at that time, at that moment. Who's going to speak to that then? I'll just jump in really quickly. Um, this happened in rehearsals for us almost every day. Yeah, us too. And and we we probably were we were buying tissue in like you know by the truckload because there's something about this material and, and like what Marcia just said Alice brought us this Alice brought us this story about the power of forgiveness I get choked up even talking about it it's the power of you know allowing allowing love into your life in a way that transforms and and, and overshadows anything and um except maybe certain recent presidents but um <laughs> um but it pretty much is, is capable of washing things clean in a way that i think people get that in the in, in the in the performance of the piece and they and having lived this in on stage you just kind of feel it in a way that touches you and you have to cry about it so that's my version of it i'm sure other people have others anyone else mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely happened to us, what was it, I'd say, at the very first day we sung through it on stage, it was the colour purple, um, and we got to the end, and we couldn't even sing our men, um, we couldn't even hold the note out, it, we were absolutely broken, um, but I think for us all, um, I think I speak for the cast when I say just to feel like we were not all the same people that we were when we met in 2019 after everything that has happened with the world so I think that definitely bared a massive weight on everyone and the fact that you know a lot of us hadn't worked for so long um and we we're all so happy to be together and tell such a beautiful story I mean of all of all the musicals in the world um to put together we put on this incredible story together again on stage um was just so special and we were all so grateful to to be there to do it and I think that definitely um amongst just all the emotion from everybody and the storytelling was probably what was got everybody there at the end it's so so funny. Funny. in my in, a, in like my capacity as like like company buzzkill we were watching it and we, we were um me and myself and Alex Loud who's the designer set and costume designer um were watching watching the performance in in the sort of tech booth so that we couldn't see the stage we were just watching the screens um and everyone was crying at the end and we had this moment where we were like we were first like oh no we're gonna have to do this again we're gonna have to do it again they're not gonna get through it they're crying and then we were like no 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 it's cool we'll, we'll let it go it's fine we were being very very stern about it and then like kind of like on the key change I looked at Alex and he was sort of like streaming and I was like oh. and then I looked back at the camera and then I was like oh, wait, I too am crying oh no <laughs> we're all crying like even even us when we were like trying to be like really on it like it, it just it gets to you it's a lot and it's such a relief I think as well I think for me that's often the thing you can't if you don't know the story going in you don't know things are going to get good for Seely. Like you don't, there's, there's, no, there's no evidence to suggest this is going to turn around. So if you don't know the story going in, it's such a relief. It's such a, it's such a sort of like release of your whole body when this person who you've been holding like this and who doesn't, who can't see a way out, you can't see a way out for her to suddenly have that release and the entire company come on stage to sort of serenade her and buoy her up. When you weren't, when you didn't necessarily know that was going to happen. I think it's, I think some, something in it for me watching it. I try and imagine when I'm watching my own work that I haven't seen it before so that I'm seeing what an audience member would see. Mm -hmm. You suddenly go, oh God, I've, I've been really tense and now I can release. And what, what happens when you release while you laugh or you cry or you collapse or whatever. And I think that's partly what 
was happening to us. <laughs> okay, on, on that note, I am going to have to say a big thank you to everyone for giving us an insight into, you know, the, the what happened behind the scenes, how you felt emotionally, you know, how you still feel about the piece and how you will feel differently the next time you perform it again, because each time it changes is, is what, I, what I've understood. But it's just to say a big thank you to everybody today for your contribution and just for sharing and, um, you know, both sharing in terms of being part of it, but also just sharing in terms of giving us a little bit of an insight into um, what happened behind the scenes. Thank you. Thank You're you. so welcome. Thank you.